so here you are giving some input voltage that you want to increase or decrease this voltage we want either to decrease either to increase according to the requirement sometimes we require low voltage sometimes we require high voltage suppose if uh, we want to run our device okay we want to run our device of uh, high power watt so in that case there will be a requirement of high voltage okay okay sir. and sometimes like mobile phone okay these yeah. things require low voltage yeah so in these devices there is a requirement of low voltages so there are the devices uh, in which there is a requirement of low voltage and high voltage so <clears throat> that is why there is a requirement of the transformer basically if voltage is coming in our home suppose 220 volt yes this is the supply voltage okay from the power station this is the supply voltage suppose from the power station and we want a voltage of suppose uh, 110 volt so what we will use we will use the transformer so yeah. transformer will transform the higher voltage into the lower voltage suppose in our home the supply sometimes is 110 volt and we want a high voltage of suppose 330 volt yes so we will use a transformer to transform will transform 110 volt into 330 volt yeah so this will be done according to the requirement according to the okay. requirement so this is the input voltage uh, i it is represented by ep and this is the output voltage it is requirement uh, it is represented by es okay so np is the number of turn in the primary coil so i am writing np here so np number of turns in primary winding ns number of turns in secondary winding okay so <clears throat> now you are supplying the in input voltage here so due to the voltage there will be the current and uh, this is a solenoid winding will behave like a solenoid yes yeah. this winding will behave as solenoid so when there will be the current in this <coughs> solenoid so what will happen i have told you when uh, <coughs> there is a alternating current in case of the solenoid so what happens the magnetic field changes the magnetic field changes why because the alternating current always changes with time yeah that is why it is known as alternating current alternating current means the current is changing with time yes so basically here will be some current and that current is changing with respect to time so due to that current there will be the magnetic field due to that current there will be the magnetic field yeah. okay so th these blue color lines are representing the magnetic field lines so why these are these magnetic field lines are there because of the current and i have told you the magnetic field will be axial so these are the axial lines okay now you can see the magnetic field produced here will be given by mu not into n into i and this i is changing yeah with time so you can yeah. say this magnetic field is also changing with time yes if the magnetic field is also changing with time then what about the magnetic flux see 
मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स इज गिवन बाय दी बी ए बी डॉट ए एंड दैट इज गिवन बाय बी ए कॉस थीटा एंड दिस मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज चेंजिंग ड्यू टू द चेंज इन द करंट सो वी कैन से द मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स इज चेंजिंग सो बेसिकली मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स इज चेंजिंग एंड वेयर द मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स इज चेंजिंग ड्यू टू दिस कॉइल बेसिकली दीज दीज आर द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लाइन एंड दीज आर द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लाइन एंड वॉट विल हैपन हेयर एक्चुअली दिस थिंग दिस व्हाइट कलर स्ट्रक्चर इज बेसिकली अ सॉफ्ट आयरन कोर एंड सॉफ्ट आयरन कोर इज अ टाइप ऑफ अ मटेरियल दैट अट्रैक्ट दी मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लाइन कन्फाइंड द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लाइन विथ इट सेल्फ विथ इन इट सेल्फ सो बेसिकली हेयर विल बी द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लाइन ना Yeah. So these magnetic field line, due to this soft iron core, core will reach to the secondary coil. Due to the soft iron core, yes. these magnetic field line will reach to the secondary coil. So now we can say, if there is a change in the magnetic field here, if there is a change in the magnetic field here, so these are the same magnetic field line here. So we can say that yes. there is a change in the magnetic field here. Yes. So okay. if the magnetic field is changing so according to this formula see this magnetic field is changing so you can say that the magnetic flux linked with the secondary coil is changing so magnetic flux linked with the coil changing or magnetic flux linked with this solenoid changing yeah uh, <clears throat> or you can say magnetic flux linked with the secondary winding changes so you can say there will be the induced emf Mm, yes. There will be the induced EMF according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Okay. Basically, number of magnetic field lines here and here are same. Okay. okay. The magnetic field line produced here are going here. Okay. Why? Okay. Because of this soft iron core. core. soft iron core confined the magnetic field line in itself within itself okay so okay. that is why see this these are the magnetic field lines here also so we can say the magnetic flux flux linked with each turn of the primary coil is equal to the magnetic flux linked with each uh, turn of the secondary coil okay so you can take this any uh this is coil this is one coil or this is one turn yeah one turn is equal to one coil so magnetic flux linked with this one turn of the primary coil is equal to the magnetic flux linked with the one turn of the secondary coil why because see here here are three magnetic field what is magnetic flux magnetic flux is number of magnetic field lines crossing per unit area yes so here see you can choose any of the coil suppose i have choose this coil so from this coil three magnetic field lines are crossing yes. now you can see this coil from this coil also three magnetic field lines are crossing so yes. that is why we can say that the magnetic flux linked with each turn of the primary coil is equal to the each turn of the secondary coil okay so that only happens in primary coil right Uh, this this coil is the primary coil yeah okay and this coil is the secondary coil and yeah. magnetic flux linked with the primary coil is equal to the magnetic flux linked in uh, with uh, linked with the secondary coil this is why because number of magnetic field line crossing the primary coil is equal to yeah. the number yeah. of magnetic field line crossing the secondary coil so now we will calculate the magnetic flux in primary coil okay okay so flux in each turn of primary coil <clears throat> that is equal to suppose this is equal to flux p 5p is the flux in the primary coil yeah. so in one turn of the 
coil in one turn of the coil the flux is pi in one turn of the coil the flux is phi so total flux linked with the primary coil okay okay np into phi yeah yes number of turns in the primary coil into into phi yeah okay so similarly we can calculate flux in each turn of secondary coil yes flux in phi is yeah each turn of secondary coil that is equal to phi right. s yes. ns this will ns into, ha, phi. NS into phi very good ns into phi yeah what is phi the, i have already written here yeah. what is phi magnetic Mag flux yes. linked with each turn each, each turn, turn of the primary coil each turn of the secondary coil yeah okay okay now we will calculate the induced emf now flux we get we get we are we have got the flux in the primary coil yes we have got the flux in the secondary coil now this is the magnetic flux in the primary coil this is the uh, magnetic flux in the yes. secondary yeah. coil okay. uh, not the coil basically we will uh, say this Sorry. no ha huh. you can say that this is the total magnetic flux with the primary winding hmm. this is the uh, coil word is not okay here primary winding we can say this is secondary winding the winding consists number of coil hmm. yeah okay now we will calculate the magnet uh, induced emf in primary coil and induced emf in secondary coil so induced emf in primary what is the induced emf in primary this is a and this is given by minus d5 p by dt yeah okay so we can write it it and d by dt 5 p is np into 5 yeah so uh, we can write np is constant number of turns yes is constant in the primary coil so yes. np you can take out of the differentiation yes. it will become minus d5 by dt Mm. So basically you can write it as minus of d of phi by dt okay? okay so induced emf in the primary coil is equal to minus of np d phi by dt this is your equation number 1 and tell me why there is a induced emf in the primary coil because there is a change in uh, flux magnetic yeah, flux yeah, yeah 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 there is a change in the magnetic, magnetic flux. flux yeah that is why there is a induced emf in the primary coil yeah. induced emf in the secondary coil Yes. Yeah. Secondary coil means that is E S, and this is given by number of turns in the secondary coil. Yes. Sir. Okay. number of turns in the secondary yes, coil sorry. just a minute 
this is given by minus of change in flux in the secondary coil divided by dt mm, yeah. so minus d by dt of flux in the secondary coil ns for ns, ns into 5 yeah. ns into 5 so it will become minus of ns, NS d5 by dt yes. so es is equal to minus of ns d5 by dt uh, this is your equation number second now we will divide the equation second with one or one with second so i am dividing the equation second, second. with equation number one. one so when we will divide we will get es by ep yeah. so you can see here this d5 by dt and d5 by dt it will cancel out yes and this minus sign and minus sign will be cancel yeah. out so yeah. if you will NP get no 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 you will get ns by np okay yeah. ns by because second NP. by one yeah this is the first relation this is the first relation and this relation is always valid this relation is always right. valid yeah. okay so now we can just check out uh, what will be the requirement of the step up transformer what will be the requirement of step down transformer from with the help of this equation so if in in case of step up transformer in case of step up transformer what we want secondary voltage must be greater than the primary voltage yeah okay so secondary voltage must be greater than the prime primary voltage so what we can say about the number of turns this es by ep will be greater than 1 so this es by ep will be greater than 1 Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. So you can say that you can write like this. This ES divided by EP must be greater than one. So you can write ES by EP is equal to NS by NP. Yeah. This is greater than one. Yes. So NS must be greater than NP. NP. Okay. Okay. So, two condition you have to remember in case of the step up transformer. Now, step down transformer. Step down. In step down, we want to reduce the voltage. So, yeah. ES less than EP. ES less than EP. Yes. So basically, NS will be less than NP. Yeah. now there is one ideal condition uh, where i will assume that the transformer will 100% efficient means there is no power loss in the transformer means you are giving some power here basically we are giving yeah. the power na electrical power yes. suppose you are giving some electrical power here and same amount of electrical power you are getting at the output so this is the case when your transformer is is 100% efficient that is not possible practically okay so 100% efficient transformer so in in case of 100% transformer you can say power input is equal to power output yeah power power input what is where we are giving the input at the primary coil or primary winding okay okay yeah at primary winding we are giving the input and where we are getting the output at the secondary coil or secondary winding okay so power given at the primary winding is equal to the power getting 
at the output of secondary winding hmm. so formula of power power is equal to potential difference multiplied by the current okay okay so what is the potential difference in primary winding ep and suppose ip is the current in the primary winding okay. for the secondary winding yes. potential difference is es by is and current is suppose is yeah so from here you can write es divided by ep is equal to ip divided by is okay so hmm. from this relation you can say the emf or induced emf is directly inversely proportional to the current so induced emf is inversely proportional to current in basically the current so this is this relation is valid yeah. when the transformer is 100% efficient okay. okay otherwise this will be not valid Okay. So, this is the condition for ideal transformer. Ideal transformer. So, what will happen if we will increase the voltage? The current will decrease. If we will increase the voltage, the yeah. current will decrease. from this relation yeah. yes okay okay yeah. so because uh, power will be same power yeah. will be same in case of the ideal transformer so if power will remain same or energy will remain same then in the, in that case suppose uh, what will happen you are just uh, increasing the voltage yeah. but at the cost of increasing voltage your current will be reduced Mm -hmm. yeah. accordingly okay. okay so you can write here so uh if we increase voltage current decreases and vice versa now in case of ideal transformer in case of yeah. ideal transformer es by ep is equal to ip by is yes so i can write es by ep is equal to ip by is and this es by ep is also equal to es by ep is also equal to ns by np okay this is also equal to ns by N. np equal to ns by np remember this expression is valid when the transformer is 100% efficient yeah this okay. expression is always valid until as unless there is no flux leakage and all that so basically we say this expression is always valid okay so basically uh, there is nothing in this world uh, that can give the 100% efficiency yeah okay uh, basically <clears throat> Hundred percent efficiency is not possible. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There will be always be losses. For example, uh, for example, suppose uh, you can take the example of your laptop. Yes. Your laptop is connected with a alternating power source. Yes. And that power source is giving some energy, or or you can say the electrical energy to this lap laptop for the working of this laptop. Yeah. so basically suppose from there uh, 300 joule for example i am saying i don't know what amount of energy is coming for example 300 joule of energy is coming to your laptop 
ओके बट योर लैपटॉप इज नॉट यूटिलाइजिंग दैट थ्री हंड्रेड जूल ऑफ एनर्जी सम ऑफ द एनर्जी विल बी वेस्टेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ हीट ऑल्सो यू कैन सी द हीटिंग ऑफ आवर लैपटॉप ओके सो बेसिकली द एनर्जी इज लॉस्ट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द हीट ऑल्सो सो हंड्रेड परसेंट एफिशियंसी मीन the amount of energy or the amount of power you are giving is equal or you can say is utilizing that uh, amount of power or amount of energy but there will be always waste of power yes in the form of the heat or different different forms okay okay so that is why uh, it is not possible to have to achieve the 100% efficiency so maybe now it's okay now if 100% efficiency not possible so practically we will see practical transformer yeah. we have the transformers now have yes. you seen transformer yes sir very complicated na huh? yes sir so practical transformer so in case of the practical transformer na we talk about the efficiency of the transformer in case of practical transformer there will be always some loss of the power or some loss of the energy so we can say that the power input not equal to the power output is not equal to the power output okay input power will always be greater than the output power because there will be some loss of the power in the form of the heat so you can say that ep into ip will be greater than es into is so this relation will be valid for the practical transformer now talking about the efficiency of transformer efficiency Efficient efficiency is represented by eta, and this efficiency of the transformer is given by the output power you are getting divided by the input power power multiplied by hundred. Power output divided by power input power output divided by power input multiplied by 100 so now efficiency you can write what is power output at output you have the secondary coil so what is power output e secondary into i secondary divided by e primary into i primary multiplied by 100 because power output is voltage into current Yeah. For the secondary coil, power yes. input is the Great. voltage into current for the secondary uh, yes. for the primary. Yeah. So this will be your another relation. Okay. So now you can take the screenshot, and if you have any doubt, and uh, then you can ask me. Okay. i have tried my best to explain uh, the transformer don't don't Nuts. Nuts. Done. Done. Okay. Yes. So, Ziad, uh, do one thing. Arrange all the notes in a proper manner. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so we will see one question. Very simple question. Yeah. Can you just explain efficiency again? Sir? Efficient, efficiency. Okay. Basically, uh, we, we we not use efficiency for transformer only. We hmm. use efficiency in different different chapters. Okay, thermal efficiency. Okay, electrical yeah. efficiency. There are different. What is the meaning of the efficiency basically? Uh, okay. Suppose uh, this is the input, and this is the wire, and this is some output. Hmm. Output means. Uh, basically output means uh, this is your sup suppose here is your laptop okay here yes. is your laptop and input means you are providing or giving the electrical power electrical power Okay. okay, and uh, electrical power. Basically, uh, here you are providing some electrical power, or you can say here you are providing some electrical energy to this. Yeah. Okay. This whole thing is your laptop. Okay. okay. This whole thing is your laptop. This can be laptop also. This can be any machine also. Okay. okay. This can be any machine also. So you are providing some electrical power. Why you are providing some electrical power? Because you want the laptop to some work. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You want. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, you want to see the YouTube and you want to use the internet. Basically, you want some use of your laptop. Yes. And how we can use the laptop by providing the electrical power? Yes. Okay. So basically, here suppose you have provided the electrical power, input power you have provided V I into I into I. Okay. Okay. Input voltage into input mm, current. Current. This you have provided. Yes. Okay. And at output, you are getting the power V out into I out. Yeah. Voltage into current. When you will calculate, when you will see, this is a practical aspect I am telling you. Okay, yeah. practically it will happen when you will do experimentally, it will be happen. This input power will not be equal to the output power. Yeah. So you are giving, suppose here, uh, in terms of energy, it will be better to explain. Yeah. Okay. 300 joule of energy you are giving, and uh, yes. the use of energy by the laptop is 250 joule. 250 joule is used by the laptop. Yes. Where is the remaining energy? It's been and, and we know that energy can never be destroyed and never be created. Yes. Here, what will happen? The energy will be lost in the yes. form of the heat. Yeah. Due to the resistance. Hmm. So that is why, that is why you are not getting the input power is equal to the output power. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Because your energy is lost in the form of the heat. Mm, yes. Okay. So that, and there is one uh, here, uh, for example, this is the first laptop. This is the first device or first laptop you can say. Yes. Suppose I have changed this as, the, this is a device. This is any device. You are providing the energy of 300 Joule and 250 Joule energy is used to work uh, that device yeah worked by the device i want to say that 
by doing the work by that device 250 only 250 energy 250 joule of energy is used okay, okay. and 50 joule is lost in the form of the heat and other loss okay okay now nice. there is another device to that device you are giving a 3 300 joule and 280 joule is used by the device and yeah 20 joule 20 is lost. lost yeah so how you will compare that which device will be better first one or second one uh, second one second one so to define the which device is better we define a term efficiency okay. more efficiency more better will be the device okay basically this is the reason that is why we define the efficiency okay. simple okay efficiency means how efficient the device is to achieve our purpose okay this is the question <clears throat> okay so see this question this is the primary winding secondary winding and what is this is a soft iron core this is soft iron core and this is the ideal transformer it is given in the question this is given in the question ideal transformer so if it is given in the question that it is ideal transformer so we can use this relation uh, es by ep es by ep is equal to ns by np is equal to ip by is this can be used yes now input is given input we are giving uh, 220 volt to the primary winding and 10 ampere is the input current okay okay and number of turns in the primary winding 100 number of turns in the secondary winding is 200 yes. we have to find the current in the secondary winding and emf in the EMF. secondary winding okay emf in the secondary winding we want to find so basically this is the out this is the input this is the output Yeah. At secondary winding, we get the output. So this is E S. Hmm. So this question is very simple. Basically, uh, use this relation. Use this relation first. Okay. okay. So what is N S? Number of turns in the secondary two hundred. Yes. Yeah. Number of uh, number 100. of turns in the primary is one. We are using this relation, okay? Okay. One hundred. What is the current in the primary? Two hundred. Two hundred. Ten. 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 Okay, current, yeah. current. 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 Not the voltage. Okay. Ten. Yeah. Ten. And I S you want? Yes. So easily we can find. Yes. Hundred and this will be cancel out. This will become two. Yeah. And this two will be cancel out. Uh, this ten will be.